Um, and here's, here's a quick tip. You want to cut the tips of the bottles uh, exactly the same amount. So when you go to squeeze material from it, you get the same exact amount of material each and every time. What if I, what I do if I'm mixing it up for say eight irons? I'll pull out a strip of masking tape about four or five inches long. Some people like to use cardboard, other coffee can lids. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a nice clean surface you can mix the epoxy on. Then I squeeze out four equal length beads about three inches long with part A. Then I take my part B bottle and I squeeze out the exact same four equal length uh, beads that are three inches long. However, I don't put them on, right on top of one another, just next to them. As I said, I'm eyeballing it, so if I feel I need to adjust, uh, I could do so now. And then once you're done, then you're ready to mix. Let's talk about packaging for a second. Most epoxies, or most 24-hour epoxies from golf club component suppliers come in plastic bottles. The same 24-hour epoxy is also available in convenient individual packets. These packages are already pre-measured and have enough material to epoxy up to about four clubs. All you do is cut the package, squeeze out all the material, and then mix and you're ready to go. Epoxy is also available in cartridges. These are packaged in uh, smaller quantities and actually cost uh, more per ounce uh, than bottles, just like the single packets. But many club makers don't mind paying for the convenience because you can pull the trigger and the right proportions are dispensed. However, when you first open up a new cartridge, the parts never come out evenly at first. In those cases, I usually have a second piece of uh, tape ready so that finally when the um, epoxy runs out evenly, I can start mixing it on that clean uh, piece of tape. Now, special epoxy dispensing guns are available, or you can simply use the plungers that the cartridges come with. The plungers are usually one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratios, but are sized to tell you which ones that you need. It's not like you can use one um, plunger with you know, a different uh, ratio on it. They, they actually are designed to, to fit specifically on each cartridge. Hobbyists and even grizzled veterans like myself when they're building one club at a time or find these cartridges to be very convenient. Just make sure to clean the cartridges before putting the cap back on. There's two little slits for the epoxy to flow through and oftentimes they're different colored. You want to wipe off the opening to avoid contamination and then put the caps back on by matching the colors on the cap. Epoxies are also available in different colors. Black is probably the most popular today because black hides imperfections or gaps between ferrules. Plus, in those cases, you're putting a plug into a through-bore club. However, light amber or light gray or amber might better con uh, be better concealed with a putter uh, that doesn't require a ferrule. But even if you have a light gray or amber epoxy, you can always add a few drops of fast dry enamel paint, like hobby paint, to tint it black or whatever color that you want. Now, hopefully you've prepared enough epoxy for the task at hand. How long do you mix the epoxy? Well, it's really impossible to overmix, unless, of course, you're using fast setting epoxy and you mix for the entire working time. But a minimum should be 15 seconds for small batches and a little bit longer for larger batches. Just make sure it looks consistent. To blend the two parts together, use some sort of mixing stick. This doesn't have to be rocket science either. You can use a number of items. I've used the same quarter inch wooden dowel for the past six years now. Once I'm done mixing, I wipe off the excess, or off the excess and it's good for the next time I'm ready to mix epoxy. 
there's no need to throw away a perfectly good popsicle stick each time you mix a batch of epoxy or use an expensive device. Some club makers resort to using a nail, a tea, or whatever they have at hand to do the job. Now there's two ways to apply the epoxy once it's thoroughly mixed together. One we'll call the mixing stick method, even though it could be a nail or a tea. Um, and the other is called the shaft method. Now using a mixing stick, you want to apply a thin layer of epoxy to the abraded portion of the shaft, as well as a thin layer of epoxy to the inside of the hosel. Note here what I said, thin layer. Don't fill up the hosel. In my opinion, you're, just wait, you're not just wasting epoxy, but you're also creating a potential hazard. If excessive epoxy goes up inside the narrow opening of a graphite shaft, it's going to create an epoxy core. If that exceeds the top of the hosel, and won't take much, this will cause a shear point at which the shaft could break. I find many graphite shafts that break above the hosel could be pinpointed to the use of excessive epoxy. In the repair department, at, um, when I worked at Dynacraft, we would collect the long epoxy core pieces, kind of like souvenirs that we would fish out of uh, shafts. And you would be surprised at how long some of these would be. But I want to share this story. There was this one set of clubs I got in because the customer said the shafts were playing too stiff. Now, something was fishy about these clubs, and I just couldn't pinpoint what it was. So I decided to take one of the clubs apart. Well, it's customary after you remove a graphite shaft to immediately remove any epoxy core while it's still warm. So I took my 6 inch long, 8 inch uh, diameter drill bit and drilled as far as I could go. And yet there was still epoxy um, uh, inside the opening of the shaft. Luckily, I had an extra long drill bit that would fit inside the, the small diameter shaft tip. Well, long sto story short, the epoxy went up two and a half feet inside the shaft. That's right, two and a half feet. I checked another club. It was the same way. Well, of course, the shaft is going to be stiffer when there's a two and a half foot solid plug inside the shaft to resist it from bending. So I called up the customer and told him what I found. I asked him how he got so much epoxy in there, and he said that he would fill up the hosel and then insert the shaft. When no epoxy was left, he'd add some more. Okay, I had to ask him why. Well, what he was trying to do was swing weight the club using epoxy. I tried to explain that this was a no-no and the reason why. He replied, well, no one told me I wasn't supposed to. So all of you in attendance today have been forewarned. However, any club making book would not show that technique, so why would the customer think that was an acceptable method? Sorry to sidetrack there. Okay, where were we? Okay, next up is the shafting method. And it's somewhat similar to the mixing stick method. But instead of using the mixing stick, we're going to simply dip and roll the shaft tip in the epoxy. No other epoxy is added inside the hosel because if you do it right, you're going to have more than an adequate amount to bond the club onto the shaft. This is my preferred method because it takes less time and clean up afterwards. All you do is insert the shaft into the hosel by slowly rotating it in an up and down motion. This will ensure the epoxy will thoroughly coat the entire bonding surface uh, for a superior bond. And in some cases, you might hear a pop coming out of the butt end. That means uh, all the air has escaped, and that's a, that's a good sound. Uh, good sound. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned because we have a webinar later this year 